Hello everybody and welcome back to this video. So in this video, I will show you very quickly how to upgrade your application to the latest Spring Boot version 3.0, Milestone 1, and uh, how easily you can upgrade your application. So let's dive in. So this is a blog post that was posted by the Spring people about the Milestone 1 that is currently available. As always, there are release notes that you should take a look what has changed and what will change in the future. And what is also very important, we will get to that later, there are also some configuration changes in your application properties. So some of these changed. You should take a look here because um, they might, your application might just fail to bootstrap because Spring will, will not tell you that the properties changed. So what we need to do, I'm starting with my person service here. The first thing that you need to be aware of is that the baseline for Spring is now JDK 17. So you need to make sure that your build JDK is JDK, JDK 17. Otherwise, you will get a lot of compilation errors. And of course, if you're building a Docker image, you should take care that your Docker image is also based on JDK 17. So for example, I'm using the IBM Cimero 17 here because the code uh, from the Spring people is already compiled with language level 17 and um, it won't work. So with this in mind, what we need to do is we need to upgrade our Spring Boot version here in the person service. We can just say it's 3.0.0 minus M1. And as this is a milestone, we also need to add some repository stuff. If you use the spring.io initializer, this will generate the stuff for you. If not, you have to add this section here. Okay, and now we can start compiling. Okay, next problem, not a big problem. As Spring Boot upgraded to Jakarta EE9, all the imports have changed. So the old imports of Java X are no longer there. Fortunately, we can just replace them. It's basically just a simple search and replace operation we have to do here. So we say replace in files, import Java X, replace with import Jakarta. Replace, recompile again. Okay, something that is very, uh, a little bit astonishing. This guy hasn't changed. So it is still Java X SQL data source. Don't ask me why, it is like it is. Recompile, application compiled. Good. So now let's try to start. So only a few steps and to get the application up and running. We start the application. Let's see what happens. Okay, it crashes. Why is it crashing? because some of the dependencies now in use are not compatible. What I can already tell you is that Sleuth, we are using for tracing here, is currently not compatible, but I think the Spring people will upgrade this. So we comment this out and maybe reload. Start again. And it still crashes, get declared methods. So there's something fishy going on with reflection and this might also happen to you with other libraries. As you see, there is something using reflection again with Java X. Remember Java X, Java X is a thing of the past. So what's happening here? The Swagger open API library I'm using in its current form is also not uh, compatible, but we did not get compile errors. We can just comment that out. And fortunately, these people already provided a drop-in solution. So instead of this, you have to use this dependency, which is currently a snapshot. 
we resolve again and restart. And next problem, minor problem. So the application is telling me that my table is not creative. Hmm. How can that be? As it turned out, as I mentioned earlier, some of the application properties have changed. And this is one of the things that has changed. So um, I'm using here I'm using here the spring data source schema, which was, which looks like this, which can initialize an SQL script from here if we define this. But this is no longer there because this has been replaced by this command, spring SQL in its schema locations. We replace that and try again. And finally, our application starts. So let's take a look. And it's there. Our health endpoint, Prometheus, Swagger, all there. And also, of course, access to the database. REST calls will also work. And with these things in mind, I think it's safe to say that it's pretty easy for a common application to upgrade. Uh, one more thing to keep in mind, Spring Native is not yet supported. I think this will be supported in an upcoming milestone, but for now it's not there. But other than that, I'm pretty astonished how much already works and I'm looking forward to milestone two. Okay, thanks. That's it for this video. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye.